Natural Florida's wildness and wilderness is the focus of Kathy Stark's art, and her latest exhibit hones in on the region's state and national parks. Welcome, Kathy. Well, thank you for having me. I'm glad to have you. So how did you begin creating Inspired by Nature, generally speaking? Well, I've always been an artist. I love being outside. And so when I go hiking, biking, dog walking, kayaking, canoeing, um, I'm always taking resource photos that I paint from. Okay. And I just love our area. I was born and raised here. You work in both oil and watercolor. I do, Which yes. I think of as being very different, but um, you've mastered them both, obviously. Uh, I don't know about master th mastering them, but I really enjoy pa painting them. And I paint very large paintings and um, more recently been focusing on our landscapes from our parks and preserves. Okay. And you have um, a number of posters that you brought. Um, these are inspired by National Park Service posters that were created in the, created in the 30s under the Works Progress Administration. Um, what Tell us about those posters and why they... You know, why you decided to kind of emulate them or, or t you know, take an inspiration from them? Well, I've always noticed them, and, and it was interesting with the New Deal, uh, Franklin Roosevelt put artists back to work as well as other workers, and the style of these posters resonates with people. They resonate with me, taking an iconic image of one of our national parks, our big national parks, and then the style of the typeface is so recognizable. And I've always been drawn to them, and I knew our parks were too small to be of interest to continue to do it, so I chose to do them myself. And so for people who aren't able to see or immediately visualize, describe the look of them and the typeface that you're talking about. Well, so the original posters were silk screens, and so they're kind of more of a graphic design, and they used about eight or so different colors, but they didn't blend the colors, and they were printed in one color at a time so with my posters I tried to replicate that look and you know chose color schemes for each different park and and kind of compressed images and used a little artistic license to create iconic images for our local parks and this um the gra the what do you call it not the font the font I guess is also sort of distinct and looks yeah, like a, to the period yeah it was definitely a, a font that was invented I guess or or designed for this this national park posters from the 30s and I think when people see it it's you know used today but it definitely has its own look and so there's like 420 some odd national parks how many posters did you create for well, so, the local parks. Yeah, so I created seven of our local parks, four National Park Service parks, two state parks, and then uh, Seven Creeks Re Recreation Area is a combination of our national city and state parks. So, uh, and I also did three different nonprofit uh, posters that are related to that, that serve and protect and, and support our park system. So listeners won't know they're spread out here on the floor, and they really are beautiful and colorful. Um, you said that a couple of them are the most popular? Well, it seems like uh, Big Talbot is selling the best, and maybe next is Little Talbot. And I think that those parks are at the beach, and people visit them and have a special connection to them. So they're they're interested in having them in their home as a connection. And how is this different from your usual artistic approach or the style that you that you employ? Well, this is more of a graphic design, and I'm a fine artist and paint you know large scale watercolors and. Uh, in, in oil paintings, and it's just definitely a totally, you know, different look, but it was something that I knew I could do as an artist and just felt, you know, compelled to, to paint. And how long have you been working on the project? Oh, uh, it's been maybe since designing them. It was definitely over um, a year or so before I um, actually painted them. And I, I will like to mention that I was supported by a grant from the Cultural Council of Greater Jacksonville and PNC Bank to help pay for my time in uh, painting these paintings. Oh, that's great. You got an artist grant to do that? Mm -hmm. I did. Terrific. Arts, arts project. So um, the work that is here is for sale on your site, but it's also on display. Where can people see the so it, larger images? Yes, they left Mosh and um, they were there from about December to the end of March. And now they are at the Visitor Center at Fort Caroline National Memorial. And so they'll be there for three months. And kind of a little special plug is this coming, um, well, this coming Saturday, National Park Week starts. And so that runs from the 20th to the 27th. And then 
on World Migratory Bird Day, April 27th, I will be at the fort in the visitor center by my exhibit for they ha- they're having a large event there. And it's kind of be a meet and greet kind of time for the artists, but there'll be other things related to that World Migratory Bird Bird Day. And I guess we should say that there is free entry on uh, 420 to the national parks on that Saturday. Well, to the to the ones that charge admission, like the big national parks, our local national parks don't charge admission. Oh, good to know. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Kathy Stark, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate.